the health-conscious Curzons lead an active life in Telford. Ruth and Andy have been together for eight years and live with their two children, nine-year-old Rianne and four-year-old Lydia. Sue and Dean Hodges live in Kent and like to take things easy. They've been married for 20 years and have four daughters. Chelsea, who is 18 and has a two-year-old daughter called Destiny, Ebony, 17, Tierney, 15, and 11-year-old Lacey. She's like, I can agree to swap times. Husbands and children for two whopping quiet children for rebellious teens. I think you are lazy, Ebony. You you're are, just trying you? to prove to people that you can still do normal things even though you're in a wheelchair. What's the reaction when your new wife is disabled? But, I mean, didn't you do stupid things when you were a teenager? Well, I'm not in a wheelchair, mate. I'm not in a wheelchair. No, I know. And how will the experience affect their relationships? She asked me the question, she says, all right, what happens in 10 years' time? I think my answer probably was nearest divorce lawyer. No, don't say that. Please, please. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> Despite being in a wheelchair since the age of 17, Ruth is a very active mum. She plays for a netball team, regularly goes kayaking with husband Andy, and has a full-time job as a maths lecturer. She also finds time to run the home and be a mum to her two daughters. Now, if I can do it, anybody can do it. One of Ruth's main passions is keeping husband Andy and the children healthy. Since Ruth started a PhD, now it's whole meal this, whole meal that, whole meal the other. When I go shopping, I am one of those sad women who read labels. Like manners, because if you say something to somebody, you just think it's nice when they say please and thank you. Andy shares Ruth's passion for activity, as well as kayaking. He's a regular on the local football team. And for Rianne and Lydia, their education doesn't stop at the school gates. Tuesdays, Lydia has swimming, Wednesdays, Rianne has violin, and Thursdays, it's brownies and ballet. With all the activities in the house, it leaves little room for anything else. We're together because we want to be together. Andy doesn't need me, and I don't... The Hodges have no choice but to be together, as they're all squeezed into this three-bedroom house in Kent. Kizzy, don't kick the cat. Oh, it's a busy family. It's a noisy family. Our family is very noisy, isn't it? Yeah, very, uh, yeah. very unique. Stop working now, kick your... Shouting is the only way to be heard in the Hodges' house. Something Sue has to do a lot of. Don't listen to me. Well, you haven't touched in here, have you? How can I? You can put the cups in the sink. For washing up doesn't take brain surgery, does it? Ten-year-old daughter Tierney has autism. Tierney is the oddity of the family because she has got these learning disabilities and autism and so many other problems that go along with it. She's like unique. Sue may have her hands full, but the children help out. 17-year-old Ebony, who is still at school, is in charge of meals. Kelsey's having pizzas later. I probably won't have any tea. Lacey's got sausage and chips. Dad and Tini and Destiny have got spaghetti bolognese. They're all on their subject right, Whatever they How want. How long have you been With girls looking after the cooking and cleaning, Dean and Sue have plenty of time together. We're not aware of it all the time, no, are we? You know that I love you and you love me. Um, but that, that's as far as it, you know. Today, the wives are leaving home for two weeks and have agreed to have no contact with their husbands for that time. I will miss them all in their own way. Miss all the noise and the shouting and the hollering and the wanting. And But I think the peace and quiet or the difference might be quite nice. Hopefully, the house that I'm going to We'll do similar sorts of things to me. Have fun, See you soon. Yeah. She's like that. <laughs> Whilst the Hodges are out for the day, their house is adapted for room. 
I was expecting that you'd have to do a ramp up to the front door. There we go, we're up. Before they meet the families, the wives get to look around their new homes. There is no indication for Sue that Ruth's in a wheelchair, as the bungalow hasn't been converted. We have a girl. Violin. Oh, God. Oh. Devil food. Shug him. Upstairs is unknown territory, but I'd really like to come up and see. It's not very elegant, but... I can see lots of children pictures everywhere. Bit more apprehensive now. Three beds in there. This is another pink room. Two girls in here, so that's five girls, wow. Each wife has been left a written manual as a guide for the new wife to run their homes. As parents, we decide on what is best for our children and ultimately this is imposed on them. I don't know. These faggots, crispy pancakes, sausages. It's a colossal amount of crap, isn't it? There's not much here that you can actually cook a meal with. You may or may not have realised that I use a wheelchair, but just because she can't use her legs, her thinking is still the same. She sounds like a complete control freak. The families return home, but there's a surprise for the Hodges, thinking? who are expecting an able-bodied wife. What have you done to our driveway? Yeah, what have you done? Hello? 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 Oh, that was a bit of a shock. Yeah, it was, yeah. I don't know what the neighbours going to think. I think they were really stunned about the wheelchair. I don't think that that had ever crossed their minds that they might get a woman in a wheelchair. It was first person to go in the sala and then we all followed. We didn't know what to... We were all shocked. All right, coat off, dudes. Just come here. In a bag. Hiya. Hiya. You all right? Yes, thank you. I'm Andy. Hiya. You all right? Hello. You yourself, How are you? Hi. Well, I know what I've got to do. I've got to do some cooking. Yeah, because well. So. That's not what I read. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's because I'm not allowed to cook. There's a difference. <laughs> wow, she's tall. Um, she's not a small lady, but... That's never a bad thing. So, you guys have got to tell me, what would Sue do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't move. Don't move. I'm just going to sit it down and have it brought to her. So I can have a rest yeah, from cooking. That would be good. Whilst Ruth adapts to letting others take charge, Sue ventures into the unknown. So. Is that oven electric or gas? Uh, electric. Oh, so I haven't got to find a click, click, no, clicker and no, set it alight. No, it's just right. literally twist the knobs and then it'll kick. Eating together might be a novelty for Sue, oh, but in Kent, eating a kebab is a sin for health-conscious Ruth. Chicken kebab. That's all right. It'll just be if it's chicken kebab tomorrow night. That might not be quite so all right. Due to access issues, Ruth will be sleeping in a nearby hotel, leaving the Hodges to reflect on their new mum. Perfect. I don't know, I don't think like I could uh, say anything bad towards her because she's in a wheelchair. And I was just expecting someone that I could, you know, get angry with if I needed to, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but appearances could be deceiving. I bet she's a bitch. <laughs> In a nice way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't let the chair fall, yeah. In Kent, strict mum Ruth Curzon arrives for her first full day with her new rowdy family, the Hodges. Have a nice day. Don't work too hard. As Dean leaves for work, he has some last minute advice for coping with the girls. <laughs> Don't forget to shout. I'll Bye do everybody. my best. See you later. See you. Bye. Girls want some life up here. Hey! Come on! 
I'm sorry if I knock holes in the wall. In return, they must get up and make her a hot drink. Tierney, can you hurry up, please, because I'd like a cup of coffee. I'm oh, coming. It doesn't sound like you're coming. She's coming. Yay. <laughs> In Telford, the quiet morning routine is in progress. Nine-year-old Rianne gets herself ready for school, whilst the parents prepare for work. It's quiet. <laughs> My house is like everyone shouting an orange, and there's so much going on, and this is just too quiet. Sue will be working at Wolverhampton University, where Ruth is doing a PhD on obesity. It just seems to me that everybody else is more worried about other people's weight than the person themselves. You know, I haven't got low self-esteem, I don't care. Ruth is shadowing Sue's job at a local community centre. After a day's work, health-conscious Ruth has the culture shock of a hodgy shopping trip with Tierney. I wouldn't buy this for my kids because by weight, this is the forever. Tell me you don't put sugar on this, you just eat it, is it? You put sugar on top of it. Glucose syrup flavour enhancers, which is E621, E635. How do you feel about eating numbers? I don't care because they're nice. They're I nice. Like Quavers. Cheddars, Twiglets. No. No. This is the bit that I normally just, I don't go down this aisle. No, I thought you were stupid. Because who would want to read the back of something that you want to buy? If you like it, you like it. You don't really want to sit there and read it because it might put you off. <sighs> Mushrooms we want in a pack. And I haven't got them. Lunch bananas. I feel like something out of Emmerdale Farm. Right, potatoes we want now. Maris Pipers. Having stocked up on fresh fruit and veg, the next stop is the supermarket, with a shopping list which is less about what to get and more about what not to get. For no asp aspartame, no monosodium glutamate, as little E numbers as possible, no artificial sweeteners, and anything that sounds like it's been... That should be OK. No E numbers in that. Well, this is ridiculous. You'd be here for hours if you're going to keep doing it like this, checking every little thing. This is a nightmare. What is the big thing about additives and aspartame <laughs> and, and e-numbers? I don't know, because she's banned me from shopping with her as well, because I'll just pick up anything. If you went yeah. shopping, would you stand there sodding about in the supermarket like I did today, like checking all these labels for... No, I wouldn't. It's one of these things, it's like, yeah, OK, it's going to be a little bit... So laid back that he really can't be bothered and won't let her get on with it. Over at the Hodges, Dean and Ruth are settling in for the night, and Cafe Ebony is open for business. I've got steak and kidney pudding and mash for Dad. I'll have um, fish and mash for Destiny, rice and latisse for Tierney, rice and sausages for Lacey. I haven't got a clue about Chelsea. Somebody in the kitchen, could I have a glass of water, please? You know, in my house, nobody shouts. Up now. Yeah. And they think, oh, yes, she's got the ump, so they come down. I wouldn't swear at my children. I would actually find that a very, very difficult thing to do, what you're saying, what normally happens in the morning. Can you think of any 
other strategies I could use. Get out or I'm going to kill you. My help. I feel like I'm failing a bit at being no, Sue. How long do you think it'll take me? It's easy though. All you've got to do is sit in that chair and just ask any one of us just by our name to do it and that's being my mum. Are Sue and Dean old and frail? I'm really, really trying not to go to bed, leaving Ruth with the girls. What, more than what you earn? <laughs> Have you always been in a chair? No, I had an accident when I was 17 and I broke my back. Um, I got drunk at a party and fell. And that's why I'm in a wheelchair. I'm paraplegic because I broke my back and damaged my spinal cord. Do you miss, like, your legs? Like, not being able to run around and play with your kids and... I play with my kids. I don't run around, but I wheel around. With Tierney's autism, she sometimes asks questions others would hold back on. How did you have a shag? <laughs> like... Like you would. No, like... Who should say... Like no, I, I don't ask Yeah, I can. I have a full, normal, active Sex bedroom life. life. Oh, OK. I'm treating Ruth exactly how I treat another person just because she's in a wheelchair doesn't make her any different to anybody else Dad. did you yeah, sue is leading a full and active life as ruth rushing go. the family to all their evening activities so you do brownies yeah. and you do ballet did you choose to do those um well i chose to do about your violin because you do violin lessons as well yeah, don't you yeah can't just split all of those things packed in one week no it's a lot to do in a week yeah. isn't there mm. oh, it's too much too much yeah the adults also have a lot to pack into a week leaving little time to get i actually said to andy it's like you're a couple, but you just sort of pass each other. There's no togetherness. Dean normally goes to the pub on his way home, then? Yeah, quite often. Sometimes I'll meet him there on my way home from work. Yeah, yeah. Probably go to... As a mum and a wife, yeah. regardless, I would still want to spend some of that one-to-one -one time with yeah. my husband, regardless. Yeah, well, that, that's why I ask, because if she says no, then I'll just be like, all right, no, that's cool. And then if you ever really... I, ne I would never say no. Girls! Getting up time! The wives are settling into each other's routines, getting a taste of day-to-day -day life. In the Hodges house, that involves dealing with Tierney, who's in trouble with the headmaster. Well, Tierney ain't been in lessons all day. No? I didn't know she'd not been in school when so that happened. She's been in school all day. Uh, she's been in school. But she been she's in not been in lessons. lessons. Situation a bit unfathomable. He said to me, you haven't been in any lessons at all. You yeah, have. And he said he's been chasing you around the school all day. He's been in a meeting all day with my door, actually. He's bloody blagging. Why would your teacher lie to, to your dad? I, I'm not even lying. I was doing a date based on the view and I've been half off helping me. So why would he say you haven't been in any lessons? And I did go into RS, because yes, I was banking. Why? And I was in science, because I was doing module so three. So bank RS? Because I didn't want to go to it. Why are you telling me the truth? I am! <coughs> Don't shout at me, please. You really can't do nothing with her. So we just have to live through telling her she is. <laughs> so she's the bloody liar, stupid idiot. You didn't do it all the time. Then people would believe you when you wasn't doing it. Don't stick up for her, you don't even like her. Yeah, that ain't the point. It's the day before rule change, and Sue has taken up Ruth's challenge to spend a day in a wheelchair to fully appreciate her life. Gone. <sighs> I'm the new lecturer for today, and I've been left in the wheelchair. I can understand why she wants to be independent. And you don't want people to help you, you don't really want them to notice you. I don't remember it being that high when I was at school. <laughs> Nowhere near. The wheelchair has given Sue more of an appreciation of Ruth's life, but not her mother. 
the wheelchair doesn't make her be obsessive with food. The wheelchair doesn't make her be obsessive with time. So no, the wheelchair doesn't cause me to change my opinions at all. Tomorrow is rule change day. For Ruth. I felt very trapped and frustrated. I've even had to sit on my hands to stop myself from doing things. I want to move, I want to get out of that room and I want to go out. I think this, this is a prison. To her, this is a prison. She can't go nowhere. Whereas in her own life, she can. Does the fetch me carry me back? I'm perfectly capable of going into the kitchen and making myself a drink, and I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed even to do that. <laughs> when I'm trying to be so... Today is rule change, and in Kent, health conscious Ruth wastes no time in attacking the Hodges' kitchen. Right, I'm guessing everything here needs is not going to stay. I know that's going to go. Right. It's a junk food prison cell in my rules. While Ruth is getting rid of food, in town Sue is stocking up. It's quite nice. supposed to be. It's time for both families to face their new rule changes. The main thing I've actually noticed about this family is that you've got no hobbies. And you're really quite inactive. No. <laughs> well, firstly, I would like to say this house is a very happy, lovely house. But it seems to be a very controlled environment. Mm -hmm. Shopping, from my observation, that is a complete farce. The checking all the labels. I won't be now closed. Oh, uh, and I like to cook, don't we? Yeah. Uh, We're going to have one meal a night. <laughs> Dean, I think you and Tierney need a bit of sort of one on one time. <laughs> I'd like you to walk the dogs <laughs> every evening. So go on then, Andy, tell me what you disagree with. I don't know, it's a hell of a lot to digest. Some of what Sue was saying, I, I know it would be true. So, it, it, for an outsider coming in and tell you, you're kind of like, well, yeah, there's the reality check. There's like a f***ing vegetable shop in there. You're having a f***ing car. Yeah. Yeah. They're really doing hobbies. Yeah. 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 I really do hope that the a fair go. I'd eat the f***ing. What have you got a around in my kitchen for? If you go through life reading, oh, that's got a camera in it, that's got a camera in it, that ain't no life, is it? Honest, that ain't no life, is it? That's what I do, Dean. Well, I read labels in supermarkets. I've bought you a blue Cinderella sweetie dispenser. And yours is Belle. No, because you like blue, you told me. We can take sweets when we want. And normally when mum's around, we're not even allowed them at all. Something like that. It's a less rapturous welcome for Ruth's healthy food in the Hodges house. Have a drink of milk and wash it down with a drink of milk. If it don't smell nice, it ain't going to taste nice, is it? Yeah, because peppers, they don't smell nice, but... They don't taste nice, Yeah, they do. I like peppers. <laughs> if you don't like it, you don't like it, do you? I'd rather be banged up inside. Go Get on. Go As Ruth's on. speciality yeah. subject is childhood obesity, she decides to spend the evening measuring the Hodges body mass index, or BMI. Chelsea, is she overweight, underweight? In the normal range. I want. I already have fat. You don't need to do my BMI. Yeah, Tierney's overweight and Tierney's overweight. Oh, my face. I've already done it, so there's no point in you doing it. Tierney's above the 98th percentile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> morbidly obese. She's not morbidly obese. No, Moderately. You're obese. You're a yeah. How do you feel? 
Add to fuel. You're the first one, empty, he said. Add to fuel. You're morbid, flip, whatever, you're right, base. How do you feel? Fine, do you care? Mm, I was alright then. Right. Yeah. What good? You're more at risk of things like type 2 diabetes and seeing your health. You say people have to be healthy, certain weight, whatever. They read the back of packets every time they go shopping. They could run up, go, go out next day and get run over by a bus. Yeah. You're showing us your life. Yeah. Are you showing it us just a different way or are you trying to show us a better way? I'm trying to show you a different way. Under Ruth's rules, the children are supposed to get up without her having to swear at them. But the new approach is not working with Ebony, who's late for college. Come on, Ebony, get out of bed. I can't hear any movement up there. That's because I'm sitting on my bed. Am I really going to have it? But it don't mean I'm going to get dressed. Come on, Ebony, I don't, I don't have this with my four-year-old and you're 17. I'm um, what? Grow up, Ebony. Well, f off then. You're sitting there chatting about us being lazy. Well, well, aren't you? No, we're not lazy. You're so just chatting out your anything for an easy life, whatever. Who you are? You're just aren't trying you? to prove to people that you can still do normal things even though you're in a wheelchair. And you're just trying to make us look lazy and you look better. To go to school. So I Oh. I think you are lazy, Ebony. I think what you like. Yeah? So why don't you prove me wrong? I think you're a bitch, but I weren't saying it, was I? I probably am a bit of a bitch. Well, good. So f*** off then, because you're starting to get on my nerves. With the situation at stalemate, Ruth decides to make the exhausting climb upstairs to confront Ebony. You don't care about your education, you don't care about your future. Just because you've got all your life like mapped out and Chelsea's got all her life mapped out, don't mean everyone's got to be like that. Then, yeah, me and you have had... Mm. You think? I haven't really spoken to you a lot. No, you haven't really spoken to me a lot. Master <laughs> Barbet, <laughs> Ebony, would you mind coming back upstairs and talking to me, please? Ebony? Ebony, are you going to come back upstairs or have I got to come down to you? Okay. Would you mind helping me come downstairs, please? Well, I'm coming up. I find the morning's the hardest. That's when I really miss my kids. You make me feel... Very unwelcome in this house, Ebony. These girls are very bright, and they're not going to. They're not going to do what they could. And I think that's really. Yeah, you can see. I think that's really sad, and I really don't want that for my girls. In Telford, Sue has arranged to work from home so she can spend more time with four-year-old Lydia. Hi. Yeah? She's come for, you know, to ask something. It hasn't caused a problem. It hasn't stopped me working. There's no reason why she couldn't be here with Ruth. And then Ruth doesn't see the little things that she does. Ruth's crusade for healthy living in the Hodges house continues with a trip to the gym for Chelsea and Evan. Right, let's just start buttons in for me, girls. I better be faster, go on, you can pedal faster than that. You can't pedal too fast. After half an hour, Ebony has had enough. Come on, Ebony, give it a go. <laughs> it's not what I'm doing, I'm not doing it. No. Okay. I'm bored. And I don't want to do it anymore. I did a little bit, I can't be bothered to do anymore. I'm quite disappointed that Ebony didn't even finish her induction into the gym. Uh, did you enjoy that, Chelsea? Yeah, it was good. And then I find out how much it is, I can't remember. Yeah. If it's too expensive, I might draw. 
You look like you're having fun. Yeah, it was fun. In Telford, four-year-old Rianne has a treat in store. In fact, many treats in store. Right, let's go for it, girl. Marshmallows. Marshmallows. They're that way. They're that way, Along aren't they? with the sweeties. Right. I've never been... I have been down there, but I've never picked anything up. You've never picked anything from the sweetie aisle? Nope. You're joking? I'm seriously not joking. Marsh. Marshmallow! Yeah? Actually, I have one of these on my One of those. Chuck them in then, darling. It's a real treat because Sue's actually bought a chocolate fountain which I've been wanting. Andy. Ow! <laughs> oh, watch my finger, dude. Sorry. So have you noticed much difference in the hypeness of these two? No, not really. So you not hear they're more loud and no. running right? Or is that what you're used to? No. I'm used to children being children and I've noticed that she is acting more like a child, but I wouldn't say that was hyper. I wouldn't say that was because of any specific thing. The fact of the matter was, she was tired, bored, hungry, and he was sat watching the football. The rule changes, and with Ruth back at the hotel for the night, she leads mutiny and reopens Cafe Ebony. Feeling like you're having a pizza. Proper food. Pizza. Sweet. Mom. Mom. Ruth is blissfully unaware about last night's rebellion, but the family's ordeal continues with today's activity: kayak. Come on with the flu. Anybody else? Don't <laughs> 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 pedal, don't pedal, don't pedal. Despite a good start, it's not long before the novelty wears off. I'm not doing it no more. You've got to get it changed. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for doing that, guys. I hope you all had fun. There's a lot of mucking about getting the gear on for five minutes in the water, really. It does don't seem... seems pointless. Back home, Dean confronts Ruth about her drive to be active. 60, knowing that I've lived a happy life, knowing that I've eaten what I wanted to eat, drunk what I wanted to drink, Smoked, you know what I mean? Yeah. What I wanted to Done smoke. what you wanted to do. Done what I wanted to do. When I broke my back, I was on bed rest and I hated every minute of it. I literally was not allowed to get out of bed. If somebody put my water jug out of reach, I had to wait for a nurse to get me a drink of water and I hated it. But perhaps because of that experience, I will now do everything in my power to not... I draw the line at how far I go with caring for someone. For someone who's been injured for, for their own stupidity, you know what I mean? That's where... you got no sympathy. I, I stop caring to a limit. But for someone... I mean, didn't something. you do stupid things when you were a teenager? But I'm not in a wheelchair, mate. I'm not in a wheelchair. No, I know. Um, I mean, my philosophy is that we all do stupid things when we're young. Yeah. And I'm one of the unlucky ones because I've got to live with my teenage stupidity for the rest of my life. I know, but it doesn't put you... I've that, got that, a wheelchair that, that, for the rest of thing. my life. That's a good mistake. Yeah. You know, I mean, people make good mistakes. People make bad mistakes. And people make terrible mistakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's a perfect answer. I don't really care. And I'm not prepared to put myself through agony to justify myself and my actions to somebody else. Why would anybody do that? In the Curzon house, under Sue's new rules, Andy is now chef. 
Ruth doesn't not like my cooking. Um, you know, she'll eat it. Good being her being a control freak. As well as doing the cooking, Andy has to spend more time with his wife, which means taking Sue out on the tap. After a few drinks, Andy opens up about his relationship with Ruth. Going out, Sue has made Andy reflect on issues with Ruth. So I wish Ruth was out with me more often than not, because at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I still feel young enough to enjoy myself, and you know, I really wish for it that that Ruth did as well. So just reinforcing what I'm trying to say. So I can only, I can only but ask when she gets back. are coming to the end of their swap. Although Ruth hasn't had much success with her rules, Dean and Tierney have agreed to spend more time together. Oh, no. oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> this is Tierney and Dean's rep. So you two have been out dog walking. Yes, You've yes. written a... Is it turned into a pub? It, it is entitled Ruth. This is the deal on Tierney Rap. We think these rules are really crap. Bang on the door with, with your shoe. That won't work, you silly moo. Well, veg and salads ain't no sin. We just prefer them in the bin. And so to end this tale of woe, thanks for coming, Ruth, but it's time for you to go. <laughs> Ruth's bit to bring Dean and Tierney closer is paying yeah. off. But the family have a confession about her other rules. We, um, well, the girls raided the freezer. I feel a bit disappointed that you couldn't manage just a few days. When in the house has been dramatically reduced. You're all far more active. And I might eat a bit healthier, you know, like my five portions a day. I'll eat salad. I've not been pitied by the Hodges. They have accepted me as an individual. They've seen past my wheelchair. Um, they're not used to f people with physical disabilities, I think. And, you know, that's been a credit to them that I have been treated as an individual. She can do things that everyone else can do. So it's like... It's just Ruth. She's a bitch. <laughs> Kitchen equals noise, um, CDs, and it conduces a happy mood. This whole experience has raised questions for Andy about his relationship with Ruth. I'll have words with her when she gets back. Tell her that I want to take some of the kitchen back at least. It's got to be important that she listens to stuff that, you know, that's, that's been said and done over the past sort of couple of weeks. If Andy sits there going, oh, you know, well, I, I think this is right and that's right, and I'll be like, for God's sake, you know, get some balls, bloke. Do you know what I mean? Do something, say something to her. She's only an unless where Ruth's concerned. It's the end of the swap, and the wives will soon be reunited with their husbands. I am excited. I'm really excited. I can't wait. I want to go home. I just want to see my family now. <laughs> Ooh. Today I can just look forward to seeing my family and getting home, which is really what I want. Ooh. 
I felt when I was being Sue, I was feeling like I just needed to get out of the house. I was feeling trapped in your house. I felt like a prisoner. If you carry on with the lifestyle that your children are living, eating this kind of diet, doing the amount of exercise your children are doing, are going to die before their parents. And I really wouldn't want to put the two of you. Roof. They're not going to die really? before me, are they? Now look, don't be oh. silly. After doing your days, I had had enough. I felt like a control, a complete control freak that had control over all these people, but was doing what I want to do and sod everybody else. And I feel that in your life, your order goes work, then your activities, then your children, and he's definitely last on the list. And my point is, if you don't have this together time now, 10 years down the line, the children will fly the nest, he will be used to his independence, and used to would just be living in the same house. Where's your couple time? There is none. And do more stuff together. Because you know, otherwise it's just gonna be like, you know, we're gonna end yeah, up- Yeah, it's gonna be like how Sue says, in 10 years time, yeah. there are gonna be two people living in the same house. Well, I, I do believe when I was pissed Saturday night, we were having quite a sensible conversation. And you know my philosophy, the drunk man speaks with a sober tongue. She asked me the question, he says, all right, what happens in 10 years time? I think my answer probably was nearest divorce lawyer, because yeah, yeah. we're get because we're gonna end up cohabiting rather than actually sort of living together. No, oh, I don't I don't think that at all. If you're not happy, tell me. What I don't know about, I can't do anything about. Yeah. Yeah, I don't explode. I wouldn't tell you. Divorce court. No, don't say that. Please, please. I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry. This is not funny. Okay. I'm sorry. You should have told me. Yeah. It shouldn't have taken this for you to tell me. Yeah. I'm not an inapproachable person. No, I, I appreciate that, mate. Hmm. Well, I'd to go to the gym. It's not funny. That's go kayaking. Hello. Do you want a swing flag? No. No, thank you. Do you want a swing flag? No, thank you. A month after the swap, the Hodges family have seen some changes, especially with Dee. Tina, you might get a job as a dog walker. Little and large, aren't we? <laughs> Putting my foot down a lot more now. A little bit more involved with the children. Right. Yeah, no, I don't bite, it just has a little... <laughs> My dad talks to us a bit more now. He's changed a bit since the programme because he talks to us more. When he'll come in from work, he'll have a chat with us and that. Whereas before, we didn't usually do it. But some of Ruth's other rule changes have been less palatable. We all could definitely be more healthier. Like, all right, I know we do eat most of the time. They have had the option of organic wheat germed spaghetti and what have you but they are not interested. It's been a long month for Andy and Ruth, who have had a lot to talk about. What was said at the table meeting, it was a bit of a bombshell. I was, really wasn't expecting Andy to say anything like what he said. At least we're able to talk better. Yeah, I think the way that we talk communicate has changed quite a lot. You actually come out with me now. I come out with you. I do feel more assertive. It, it's it's taught me that I've got to use my mouth more. Nine-year-old Rianne has also yeah. seen big changes. Would you like breakfast in bed? Do you do breakfast? You could do me a cup of tea and some toast. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So it's had more chance of me and um, Mum sitting down watching TV. We have 
got positive things from the experience. I think actually the whole experience has been beneficial.